There you go. highway into Rhyolite is paved and it's only one and a half miles off the main road. So there it is over in the hills, on the foothills. Super cool. I'm excited. We're going to get some good, good photos. Alright, let's go for a tour. Welcome to Rhyolite. So in Rhyolite, there's all kinds of cool things. Here's an old railroad car, a Union Pacific. Looks like a caboose. Super cool. Amazing how these things held up, being that they're wood, you know, right along the tracks. So let's see what this big building is right here. It's the train depot. Wow. This picture of Rhyolite way back in the day. A lot of buildings. That's 1907. Wow. Rhyolite Ghost Casino. Circa 1937. This is weird. All around the desert, there are tin cans, old tin cans everywhere. Like massive amounts of cans. There's just massive amounts of cans everywhere. Like the dumping ground or something. Just tons and tons and tons of tin cans. I, I don't even know what, what might have been in here. But they're all about the same. Some are opened, some are just punctured. See, this one was opened, the can opener. And this one was just punctured. Oh, I wish I knew what was in there. It's fascinating. Look at the desert. It's just littered with cans. Super weird, man. There's no way to figure it out. Oh, here's a square tin. I don't know what that was. Mostly just like soup cans, I guess. Maybe, maybe, maybe cans of soup. Camel soup. I don't know. Sure is weird though. Like everywhere in the desert. Like way out there. Just cans, soup cans. You get your soup and go eat in the desert, I guess.
Founded in 1904 and dead by 1916, Rhyolite was one of several short-lived boom towns from the late gold rush era. People were drawn to the desert on the edge of Death Valley by the promise of gold found amongst quartz in local mines, and by 1906 the town had all the promising indicators of permanence with largest population in the area. According to the U.S. National Park Service, the town immediately boomed with buildings springing up everywhere. One building was three stories tall and cost $90,000 to build. A stock exchange and board of trade were formed. The red light district drew women from as far away as San Francisco. There were hotels, stores, a school for 250 children, an ice plant, two electric plants, foundries and machine shops and even a miners union hospital. But in 1907, the U.S. financial markets were rocked by a panic that saw closures of banks, businesses, and mines. Rhyolite began to falter. The mine closed in 1911. In 1916, the lights went out forever. Since then it has been featured in several westerns. In 1925 Paramount Pictures restored the bottle house for the film The Airmail, and it was restored again more recently by locals. Empty hulks of the three-story bank, the general store, and smaller buildings remain. Also there is a great-looking train station, as well as some other well-preserved ghost town ruins. One of the most well-known houses was constructed using hundreds of glass bottles in the walls from Adolphus Bush Products, more familiar now as Budweiser. Besides the bottle house, there are a number of weird and bizarre works of art strewn around this ghost town. Part of the Goldwell Open Air Museum, several artists have installed permanent sculptures starting in 1984. Probably the most interesting is the twelve life-sized disciples patterned after The Last Supper, built in 1984 by the Belgian artist Albert Sikalski. They consist of empty flowing robes, made of fiberglass, so they appear to be ghosts. There is also a 20-feet-tall model of a miner and his penguin made of metal, and a 20-feet-tall pixelated version of a nude woman made of pink and yellow cinder blocks. Another fiberglass ghost, the Ghost Rider, stands next to his bicycle, ready to go for a ride. Rhyolite is not too far from Beatty, NV, and if you're in the area, definitely worth a visit. Also, nearby is the eastern entrance of Titus Canyon, a one-way only drive into Death Valley. I've never really been into a mine. A little bit creepy. So, yeah, a little claustrophobic. There's the town of Rhyolite from the mine. You really gotta drive around because there's so many little things strewn about the desert. Here's a, I guess a mine shaft, it looks like. There's barbed wire all over it. Long ago, a man named Tom Kelly arrived in Rhyolite in search of his fortune. With dreams of striking gold, he joined the throngs of hopeful prospectors who flocked to the area. However, luck was not on his side, and after months of fruitless searching, Tom found himself without money or prospects. Undeterred by his misfortune, Tom decided to make the best of the resources he had. He noticed that the desert winds had deposited countless empty glass bottles among the town's ruins. Inspired by this unexpected abundance, an idea sparked in Tom's mind. He began collecting the discarded bottles, envisioning a unique creation that would bring life back to Rhyolite. Day after day, under the scorching sun, Tom toiled away, meticulously constructing his masterpiece. With unwavering determination, he carefully arranged the bottles, using mortar to hold them together. He adorned the walls with colorful glass, arranging the bottles in intricate patterns that shimmered in the sunlight. As word spread about Tom's project, 
people from neighboring towns flocked to witness the wonders he was creating. They marveled at the glowing walls, admiring the artistic vision and resourcefulness it represented. The bottle house became a symbol of hope in a place that had been all but forgotten. Tom's creation didn't just end with the exterior. Inside the bottle house, he crafted beautiful stained glass windows, allowing light to dance in a kaleidoscope of colors across the rooms. He fashioned furniture from discarded materials, breathing life into his humble abode. The house became a sanctuary of beauty, serving as a refuge for those seeking solace in the desert wilderness. The bottle house soon became the heart of Rhyolite, a beacon of creativity and resilience. Locals and tourists alike gathered to celebrate the artistic marvel, and the town experienced a small resurgence of interest. Artists, writers, and dreamers began to settle in Rhyolite, drawn by the allure of the bottle house and the untamed spirit it embodied. Years passed, and Tom's creation continued to stand tall, defying the harsh elements that battered the desert. The bottle house became a testament to the enduring power of the human spirit and the ability to transform the forgotten into something beautiful. Today, as visitors explore the ghost town of Rhyolite, they are drawn to the bottle house like moths to a flame. They marvel at its intricate design, imagining the determination and vision that went into its creation. Tom's legacy lives on, inspiring generations to find beauty in unexpected places and reminding them that even in the most desolate of landscapes, hope and creativity can flourish.